কমান্ডার ইউনিট টু এশিয়ান এমবিসিতে হামলা হয়েছে আই রিপিট এশিয়ান এমবিসিতে হামলা হয়েছে Hey everybody, do right back at it again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about a new game called Zero Hour. Let's go ahead and get into it. Zero Hour is the first competitive multiplayer FPS game made by Bangladesh developers M7 Productions and Artrito, is that how you say that? Sorry for butchering these names. This game is a five versus five tactical FPS game with online team-based gameplay that takes place in a variety of fictional locations interpreted in Bangladesh with real life scale and resource management. So I mean, that's cool. Like a majority of the games that I see are almost always like released in areas like the United States and America has just been done to death at this point so might as well go somewhere else so I can't wait to see that I think Bangladesh is an interesting location I'm curious to know what the politics are over there but anyways the game is also planned to be released in the popular Steam store with an August 2020 release date so that's just right around the corner pretty cool I think one question that I have though is if it's going to release as a full game or if it's going to release into early access I should really ask them zero hour brings a close quarter combat experience to the game that focuses on two teams with each player having their own roles. The attackers utilize shields, weapons, and the planning table, and the terrorists utilizing traps and gadgets in order to fortify the area. That sounds pretty cool. I really have to wonder what kind of gadgets we're gonna get. I mean, the only thing that I can really think of is, um, like, you use a grenade with a wire, and the moment that they open the door, they trip on it, and boom, knocks out, like, the entire team or half the team. I wonder what the attackers would have to do to mitigate that problem. Like, do we get, like, some sort of multi tool to cut the wire or do we just get like a stick and like throw it at the wire or something just curious to know what we get here it talks about the planning table at the start of each round ms9 unit the attacking team can come up with strategies by drawing in the planning table with a 3d miniature version of the location being played similar to the use of blueprints so this is one thing that i feel that rainbow six siege was like really missing like they showed it off in their trailer that you're able to like you know mark where you want to go and whatnot but that's not exactly how it played out so it's actually pretty Pretty cool how you actually get to see like a 3d model of the area and you can plan accordingly i feel like a lot of people are going to get a kick out of that hell i've actually seen a whole lot of people do it already continuing on it can be used to direct teammates where to spawn and or advance from there are three types of markers that you can place around the planning table which can indicate danger and objectives during this phase the terrorists the defending team will be given time to place traps gadgets and aid their defenses and aid their defense strategy yeah so i don't think that this is a game where you can actually like toss in a drone and see where things Things are like you have to actually go pretty slow at least that's what i've seen from gameplay and from what i was told from the developer he says here we reward players that play as a team and penalize if players run and gun he basically made sure that i told you guys as a warning to you that this game will be slow paced and is dedicatedly made for tactical gameplay lovers only i gotta say those are some bold statements but only time will tell if that's true i've also heard that if you're playing a mode where you have a hostage you're able to pick up the hostage and take him to to another location but you have to keep your eye on the hostage because if you don't the hostage will get up and leave and try to extract by himself so you literally have to aim the gun at him every now and then to make sure he doesn't get up and run away that's another thing that i feel like rainbow six siege missed its opportunity on because the hostage just literally stays there in one room and you never get to move him so this definitely mixes up the flow of gameplay and actually puts zero hour above rainbow six siege in terms of just more options but anyways moving on here it says resource management both teams have resources that they need to manage per three rounds. The attacking team has two sets of five weapons, while the defending team has five sets of five types of gadgets. This is crucial in terms of saving your resources. Picking up and utilizing your opponent's weapons. Oh my god, you can actually do that? That's kind of cool. And not giving an advantage to your enemies. So wait, if you're the attacking team and you see a bunch of gadgets like on the floor or something, can you like pick them up and then take them away from the enemy? That's kind of cool. Or if you're the defending team, you could jack their weapons if they die. At least that's what it seems like to me. But anyways, Moving on here, it talks about the hostage. The hostage held captive by defenders will have its own mindset, which means it can run away if not careful. This indicates that it would be critical to keep an eye on the hostage and move it around wherever players feel necessary. So yeah, so again, here's another thing that Rainbow Six Siege missed its mark on. Just the fact that you can move the hostage around. Just another missed opportunity that could have made the game interesting. Then they talk about doors here. In order to bring a realistic approach, the doors help in encouraging slow and tactical games 
gameplay. See, this is what Ready or Not was missing in the freaking multiplayer. That's one thing that it's missing is doors. It continues on to say here, it would cause both teams to hesitate before entering a room since it won't be obvious to know what's going on behind the door. See, these guys get it. This is why doors are so important in the multiplayer aspect. Come to think of it, I think Ground Branch even has doors. But anyways, it continues on to say, breaker switch. The switch causes a complete blackout of the whole operation building that you're playing on. By doing this, the players won't be able to visualize their surroundings unless they use the tactical flashlight. Are we not going to have uh, night vision goggles? I mean, I think I actually did see some artwork with night vision goggles, so I'm sure we're going to have some, right? But anyways, it's pretty cool that you're going to be able to actually change the map by looking for the circuit breaker and just flipping it off. It's really going to make the defenders and the attackers think twice about moving in. I think that attack flashlights are pretty cool, but I think it's more efficient to go in with night vision goggles so that the defenders don't see the light. So yeah, this project certainly sounds pretty cool. This is a game that was recently brought to my attention because it's apparently a game that's right up my alley. Yeah, from what I understand, this game is a much more realistic, down-to-earth, Rainbow Six Siege style type of game. Like, you actually find more in common with this game than you would with Ready or Not. For anyone who's actually played Siege and thought that the recent updates for Siege have been kind of goofy looking, maybe this is your alternative. I've seen a lot of gameplay of it, and it really looks a lot like what that initial trailer was for Rainbow Six Siege when it first came out. Now, I'm not saying that this game is perfect. It obviously still has its issues. Like, if you were to actually look at the gameplay itself, it looks very snappy, as in, like, it actually doesn't feel like it has an animation. Like, say, if you decide to aim, like, it kind of just, like, snaps to the ACOG that he has on or something. Like, there's no animation of him fluidly and smoothly moving the gun up towards his face. So, you know, it's a game that still needs a lot of work, but it for sure seems like it actually functions the way that it's supposed to. I've heard from a lot of the YouTubers and other players that have actually gotten to play that it seems to actually work really well, despite all of the little bugs here and there, and the game not necessarily looking all that great. I mean, graphically, it doesn't look anything that spectacular, but so long as the gameplay is actually good, then not a big deal to me. I'm not really in it for, you know, looks. I'm in it for, like, the gameplay. And if it plays, like, a really good Rainbow Six type of game, then I'm gonna try it out, of course. So, yes, I have talked with the developers, and I'm hoping that they can give me some keys so that I can give out to you guys, and a key for myself so that I can actually try out the game and show it off as much as possible, and really just go in depth with it. And, yeah, when those come in, then I'll definitely either stream or drop a video on it and put up some raffles here and there to get some keys out to you guys. But, yeah, I'm gonna end the video right here. What are your guys' thoughts? Do you think that this is a game that you're going to actually play? I mean, I think that this is a really cool setting for a Rainbow Six type of game. Bangladesh. Definitely not something that you see every day. I've actually had some people who were skeptical of this game because they were thinking that this is coming from like a weird part of the world that hasn't really produced a game like this before. Or maybe they have and I just don't know about it. But I've seen people playing it and it actually looks legit. So it's definitely something to keep an eye on in my opinion. I definitely can't wait to try it out. But yeah, have you already played it? Let me know what you thought down below if you actually already played it. Because I've actually had a lot of people talk to me about this game. So, you know. Just let me know. If you're someone that enjoys the fact that I cover games like Zero Hour, why don't you go ahead and like the video, comment, and share the video. If you're someone that's new, be sure to subscribe and ding the bell. Stick around a little. You never know. You might find something that you like. If you would like to support the channel, check out my Patreon. It really helps. Just send two bucks a month. And with that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.